you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. What's up you guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to Still the Spotlight. Today I'm doing another one of my most requested character inspired lookbooks, which is dressing like Sailor Moon. I love doing any of these kind of nostalgic lookbooks and Sailor Moon was my all time favorite show as a kid. I believe Tuxedo Mask was my first ever 2D crush. Let me know who yours was. I actually have just this small box of a couple of toys I had when I was a kid and I had to dig these out because these are like the most cursed <gasps> Sailor Moon dolls you have ever seen in your life. Sailor Mars and Venus were my girls back in the day. Ray is still number one in my heart. Their style typically has a very early 90s feel to it, which surprisingly was quite outside my comfort zone, but I've done the best I can and kind of kept my own personal style in there just a little bit. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Before I get into the looks, I did also want to give a shout out to Monica because I remember watching her Sailor Moon inspired lookbook like a year ago and it was so beautiful, so wholesome. So I'm going to link that down below for you guys to check out as well. But yeah, let's get into my interpretation of our favorite magical girls. So I thought we'd ease into things with this look from Ray because it is a lot more modern than a bunch of the other outfits. I really don't think you could pinpoint this to a particular time period or aesthetic. It's just quite simple and wearable. All I needed was a red crop top, preferably with some sort of cutout detail to team up with a pair of white trousers. I wasn't sure what shoes she was wearing, but opted for these chunky platforms to have a 90s feel. Plus these pants are kind of too long, so it works. Moving on to the clumsy queen herself, and I was actually pleasantly surprised with this one because we managed to keep it very similar to the original, and despite the fact it's not something I would typically gravitate towards, I ended up loving it in the end. I think it's thanks to this really cool color combo, something about the color blocking of these two in the skirt and shirt just gives it that real retro feel. I also really enjoy the more playful accessories, including this hairstyle. I really want to do the meatball head buns more often. If you've ever searched for Sailor Moon outfit inspo, I am sure you've come across this look. I think it must be one of the most popular, probably because it doesn't feature a ton of color like most of the other looks. I don't know, there's something about an all black outfit that just feels a little bit more achievable and easier to pull off. The base is made up of some classic wardrobe staples like a turtleneck and tennis skirt. I did take it upon myself to add in a few extra accessories like this moon and star pendant necklace, which I thought was very fitting. Since I don't have dark hair like hers, I also decided to throw on the beret. I just felt like this made the look a little bit more seamless and flow from head to toe. Tuxedo mask, or as us 90s English dub watchers know him as, old mate Darren. <sighs> He is tuxedo mask, I don't believe it. This is another fairly simple outfit. I kept the same black turtleneck on. The only real challenge is trying to match the color of the trousers because it is quite a unique muted lilac shade. I got it pretty close in the end, unfortunately. The same cannot be said for the green blazer. Mine is obviously a lot lighter, more on the pastel side of things, but I do think it still pairs up nicely with the pants, so we're rolling with it. Okay, Sailor Venus has taken me really outside my comfort zone with this one. I ended up feeling like Sandy from Greece because it is quite an exaggerated silhouette with this really full long skirt, very feminine features. I did try to tone it back a bit and add my own personal style by opting for this cropped shirt instead of going for a really flouncy and flowy blouse. Overall, it is still a very pretty look that just makes me want to twirl around. Just a quick pause on the Sailor Scout so we can actually discuss how we can consume other animes easily thanks to today's video sponsor, which is Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, aka a virtual private network, which comes in handy for many things, but you already know my favorite is the ability to access more Netflix libraries. The Netflix library you see every time you sign in can be completely different depending on what region you live in, but with Surfshark, you're able to quickly and easily change up your location settings and instantly you will have access to a ton more content 
from across the world. Like I said, this is a great way to be able to easily watch more anime. And a quick tip, one of the best locations to change to for this is actually Singapore. If you're like me and you also enjoy binge watching some K-dramas, then can I recommend coming over to my neck of the woods, Australian location settings, because we have a ton of K-dramas for some reason. If you are someone who shares your Netflix account with other people and you're like, oh, they're gonna want in on this as well, fear not, because Surfshark is actually the only VPN that offers unlimited devices under just one account. Of course, they have your back for a ton of other things as well, including ensuring your privacy and safety online by protecting all of your personal information. Personally, I find this really helpful when you're out and about using potentially sketchy Wi-Fi, which honestly, I don't leave the house too often, but I like that security when I do. You can use my code SPOTLIGHT for 83% off plus three extra months for free. And since Surfshark actually offer a 30 day money back guarantee, you can try it all risk free via the link on screen or down below in the description box. So I may have let my Sailor Mars bias creep in a little bit. We are doing a second look for Ray. I mean, you can't blame me. As you saw earlier, I already have this green blazer, so it just felt wrong not to try and recreate this look. You guessed it, the base is quite simple yet again with this little black dress. However, this time around, your girl had her own accessories. I did not have to improvise. She had this gold chain belt on, as well as this red cross body bag with matching red pumps. I know what you might be thinking, the red and green is a little bit too Christmassy for you. Well, apparently that was the look in this show. However, if you don't have green hair, this option might work better for you. We've kept on the exact same base, just threw a few extra chains over the top and switched out that outerwear for this red faux leather jacket. This actually comes in handy for quite a number of anime inspired outfits I've done in the past. But back to this specific look, I finished it off with some sunglasses and these under the knee boots, which again, really play into that 90s nostalgia. For me, this ended up being another very wearable option. So this isn't some of my finest work. I do actually really like the original reference image. However, if you're doing double denim and you don't have the perfect shade combination, you're kind of doomed from the start. And that is what happened here. Unfortunately, I didn't have a vest to match the jeans. So I tried a couple of different options. Nothing was really working. I think personally, I prefer it without a vest. Um, I do really like the jeans, the patchwork detail, super cool, but yeah, my bad. The iconic dark lady transformation. All the other outfits in this video are taken from the girls casual everyday wear. So this one can lean a little bit more costumey. I do kind of look like a vampire obsessed teenager going to the prom in the late nineties, but bite me. My dress doesn't have that same dramatic feel to it, but I thought it could still work. I do wish that the neckline was lower just so we could see more of that beautiful red mesh top. I do feel bad that I wasn't able to do individual looks for Neptune and Pluto. I had to do this kind of combination package of these purple toned looks they rocked. Even still, I found it to be quite a challenge. It obviously has more of an old school sort of feel to it with this oversized lapel collar and the double breasted closure. The dress was also a little too big, felt kind of frumpy. So I cinched it in at the waist with this belt, threw on the over the knee boots, which actually ended up being my favorite part, but also the least accurate. Sailor Mercury actually had some really cute preppy outfits I wanted to recreate, but sadly didn't have any similar pieces. So I ended up going for this. There's something about this outfit that does feel a little bit more mature than the others. I tried to keep it youthful with the plaid shoulder bag as well though. And looking back at it now, I think another tweak I could have made would be adding some white knee high socks to it. I think that would look really cute. Finishing things off with Sailor Jupiter, I will forever be jealous of how full her ponytail is. This is another one of my favorite outfits, probably no surprise whatsoever, considering it does feature a sweater vest. Her original one was a tighter cropped fit as opposed to this looser one that I'm sporting here. I don't know, I just really like the proportions of the button up shirt just peeking at the bottom, especially when teamed with these tight thigh highs as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hoped you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what Sailor Scout looks were your favorite and what anime or cartoon lookbooks you wanna see in the future. Hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Bye.